was the way he couldn't look me in the eyes. It was the way he stuttered over every question. The way his hands trembled as he closed her police file. I sat across from him listening to the story his words were not telling. Let go. Let go and let your family grieve, he says to me. Such privileged words spill from the mouth of a man who has not witnessed the oceans that have fallen from the eyes of my whānau. Let go. Her death is unexplained, he says. Such privileged words fall from the mouth of a man who does not carry the burden of explaining her absence to the son she left behind. Welcome everyone back to New Zealand Mysteries. This is TJ. Uh, that very moving intro to that video is from the cousin of this gorgeous young lady, Jamie Kawai, who has been missing for over a year now. I'm going to have links in the description box below to all the sources uh, and back to that video so you can watch the rest if you want to. But we really want to look and see if we can see what happened to this beautiful young woman, read her story. So let's have a look. This story happens around a place called Tolaga Bay and we'll have a look at that. Tolaga Bay is both a bay and small town on the east coast of New Zealand's North Island located 45 kilometres northeast of Gisborne and 30 kilometres south of Tokomaru Bay. The region around the bay is rugged and remote and for many years the only access to the town was by boat. The town is a popular holiday spot. Its population is predominantly Māori. The population of Tolaga Bay was 831 in the 2018 census. So not a very big place at all. We'll check on the map and have a look where it is. So this is the North Island of New Zealand and we are looking here on the east coast. So down here is Gisborne and uh, it looks sounds like this is the major town closest and this here is Tolaga Bay itself, just this wee settlement, not very big at all. And featured in this story is the Tolaga Bay Wharf car park which is over here. Right, let's get into it. I do apologise for uh, the quality of the video. I don't have a computer that can run any of the, uh, you know, programs that I need to. So I just have to really do really simple videos. But hopefully it's going to get the message across and that's what's important. So first, nzherald.co.nz. And this is the 14th of October 2019. Search for missing Gisborne woman Jamie Kawai continues after her car found with keys inside. Very first flag, very odd. Police searching for a 27-year-old Gisborne woman missing since Thursday have located her car at a Tolaga Bay car park. Police are searching the shoreline around the Tolaga Bay wharf area and surrounding land as they continue to look for the young woman. Jamie Carr White was last seen in the Tolaga Bay area on Thursday morning and her family have grave concerns for her welfare. A police media spokesman confirmed her car was found parked with the keys inside at a Tolaga Bay Wharf car park on Sunday. Three search teams have been deployed to carry out detailed shoreline searches. Family have posted on social media that she did not have her phone or laptop on her but it appeared her Facebook account was still being accessed. Now, that information about her Facebook being accessed, this is the one and only time that uh, it is mentioned, so I'm not sure what the what the, the go is with that. Jamie has links in Gisborne, King Country and Hamilton, according to her family. They are urging anyone who men or who may have seen her or knows where she is to contact police on triple one. So a very quick article there just giving the basic information. Let's try and get a bit more. So again at nzherald.co.nz, 5th of January 2020. So only a few months ago, missing a woman's family desperate for clues to disappearance. 
The family of a Māori woman who disappeared at Tolaga Bay last year is pleading with the public to help them continue searching for her. Jamie's car was found at Tolaga Bay Wharf soon after she disappeared. It's been 87 days since Jamie disappeared on the 10th of October last year after her car, with keys left in the ignition and belongings inside, was found at the Tolaga Bay Wharf. The police searched for the 27-year-old in November last year and said her disappearance was not considered suspicious, but her family think otherwise. The missing woman's family have launched a social media campaign to raise awareness for her, which has gained thousands of shares online. Now, if you are a Facebook user in New Zealand, I am sure you would have seen stories, uh, articles, uh, pleas, from the, the family all over Facebook. I've seen lots of them and I've shared lots of them to our New Zealand Mysteries Facebook page and kept an eye on it. And the family just have been going nuts. They've been working so hard to keep this story alive. So let's try and help them. A cousin of Jamie's, Jonique, said all missing women should get the same attention. In a social media post she says, does being a young Māori mother make her less deserving of the same attention that as a nation we give to the likes of Grace Mullane. Can we truly say that had she been a tourist or a Caucasian, New Zealand would know her name by now? It's very, very sad that her family think that uh, because she's an indigenous woman that she doesn't matter as much, which is the furthest from the truth and this is not just a New Zealand thing this is a worldwide thing uh, indigenous people being treated less than or not their disappearances or murders or whatever not being uh, taken seriously or yeah that's all over the world and you know we do have problems in New Zealand too that we only have two really news stations on national television very, very rarely would we ever see a missing persons case on anything like that, you know. We have to go to the one or two media sources we have online just to dig up some information. And um, it's really hard to cover cases in New Zealand because of this. Let's continue. Jonique has been updating police but doesn't think the investigation had gone far enough and hoped to find new evidence pointing to the truth. And uh, it definitely shouldn't be the family's responsibility to have to investigate um, if police are failing to do their job. The lack of thorough investigation to rule out foul play has cost my family precious time and prolonged despair. Time that I then had to make up by investigating myself to find enough information just to get police to look again. The family said they're worried something sinister may have happened to her. We believe she is close to Tolaga Bay, 10 to 30 kilometres north. My final plea is that if you're out hiking, tramping, hunting, walking in and around abandoned homes, the shorelines, rivers, that you keep her in mind, Janique said. So yes, please, if you've got friends up that way, please share this information with them so they know to keep an eye out for anything relating to where Jamie may be. Her body may be around Mangatuna and Mangatokuro and ask anyone going through the area to keep her in mind, she said. And if we just skip over here to um, the map again, those two places she was just talking about are just sort of up, up river, really. And I think one of these is actually Mangatokuro River. So I think she's sort of talking about there and anywhere. I mean, yeah, you've got to search anywhere, don't you? It could be anywhere. Just a quick note before we go on to the next one. If you like or dislike the video, please thumbs up or thumbs down. Subscribe really helps my channel, and I so appreciate everyone that subscribes. And hit the notification bell and choose what you'd like to be notified about. Uh, nzmissing at gmail.com is where you can get hold of me. And want to give a big thank you to Truth who went to buymeacoffee.com slash uh, NZ Mysteries, I should say, and bought me a coffee. Uh, the donation is extremely appreciated. Thank you very much. It's going to go to the 
better computer fund, I think, so I can do better things. Let's carry on. We are at stuff.co.nz with these beautiful pictures, really raw pictures of young women having a blast, laughing, and their faces are glowing. It's a beautiful, beautiful picture. A year after Jamie Carwise's car was found on Tolaga Bay Wharf, her family is no closer to knowing her fate. December 5th, 2020, this was published. Even a year after she disappeared, mentioning Jamie Carwise's name is enough to end a conversation in Tolaga Bay. Carwai was known in the East Coast community for her contagious laugh, generosity, her love for music and talent as an artist. But the sound of her name, followed by questions of her disappearance, ends in lowered voices, rumours of foul play, deteriorating mental health and drug use. The 27-year-old mother of one vanished on the morning of Thursday, October the 10th last year. More than a year later, the police case remains open and active but isn't being treated as suspicious. Families say the police seem to have assumed that Jamie took her own life. And uh, not good things happen if you assume things and don't get facts and stuff. Uh, however, despite her struggles with mental health, some of her family do not accept this explanation. And just, just a thought, people with mental health, depression or whatever, doesn't automatically mean that they are suicidal we can have ups up days we can have down days you know um i'm going to have information in the description box about places you can call for help if this triggers anything for you at all this is Toliga. it's a small town people are not talking said her grandfather edu kawai his granddaughter's car was found by Māori wardens four days after she was last seen at the car park next to Tolliga's famous 660-metre wharf. Now, this is a picture of the inn that Jamie was working and living at, uh, and apparently she was quite happy. And it's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. And there's a short 30-second video but I will leave links to it in the description box below so you can go there. Her car was unlocked with the keys inside along with damp clothes. There was blood on her, on her clothes in the car as well as her room at the Tolaga Bay Inn. Red flags, two red flags. Her family told staff they also claim no forensics or fingerprints were taken at either location. That uh, I can see why the family is so angry. And now it's too late, isn't it, to take fingerprints or do forensics. Um, they've lost their evidence forever. And I don't see how they think that blood found in the car in a room doesn't raise any red flags for the police. I don't understand. You'd think they would at least look into it, um, but it just appears that they haven't at all. So police have not responded to Stuff's questions about circumstances of Jamie's disappearance, including forensics and the presence of blood in her car and room. There has been no trace of her since. Two days after Jamie was last seen and before her car was found, two year 250 commemorations were held in the town, a celebration marking 250 years since the first onshore encounters between Māori and Pākehā in 1769. The beach was busy and the bay was filled with boats, yet no one reported seeing Jamie's car arrive in the wharf car park. Not one person saw anybody. If she had drowned, she would have floated and she would have gone where the tide takes her. The divers searched and found nothing. And then the stories started to go, he said. The rugged beach town is 40 minute drive from Gisborne and its population normally over 700. It grows drastically during the summer months. A woman who did not wish to be named said Jamie's disappearance had rocked the community. All sorts of terrible rumours went around that this person did it and that person did it. And um, unfortunately in a small town, that's what you get, isn't it? Uh, and it doesn't help, you know, 
um, with all the rumors and that you want facts, not rumors. She said there's some very suspicious people around here who are superstitious and believe in all sorts of things. So whatever you hear, you'd have to take with a grain of salt. The woman also praised the police and said they were very much liked. So she has a different perspective, I guess. Just over a year after Jamie disappeared, on a Tuesday afternoon, the main street of Tolaga Bay is quiet. Um, so, you know, when the tourists aren't there... Many locals refused to speak to stuff, referring questions to the family. Others said it was well known that Jamie smoked dope and had struggled with her mental health. And I don't see what either of those has to do with anything at all, to be honest. After she went missing, there was witness sightings of Jamie at the wharf on October 11th, but the family aren't convinced that sightings were reliable. Her granddad said the family were led to assume by police that his granddaughter's last moments were in the water, an assumption that didn't make sense to him or any other family member as Jamie hated the water. Ding, another red flag. It's not making sense. She loved to watch the sea but she would never get in. She was afraid of the water and wasn't a swimmer. Both grandparents said their granddaughter was a talented, independent young woman. She was a black belt and an amazing artist. She could draw you in a few minutes. She used to draw pictures and sell them for a dollar at school, which was her lolly money. And if you're not in New Zealand, yeah, if you're not in New Zealand, lolly money means money for candy. Eru remains angry about the lack of investigation by police. We asked if they fingerprinted the room. They said no. Did you know there was blood in the room and in the car? They said yes. And he said, well, doesn't that tell you something? It would tell me something, that's for sure. He said he wants his granddaughter's body to give her a proper burial and have a place for the family to visit her. And uh, actually, for people, the family of missing persons, that's all they want is the body so they can have that closure lay that person to rest finally and have somewhere to visit and mourn uh, and celebrate that person so that's it's very tough jamie had lunch with him on the tuesday before she went missing she was supposed to join them for dinner that evening but never showed up it was very unusual for her to disappear like that she always stayed in touch with us Jamie's cousin, Janique, said she was frustrated that the case had not been treated as suspicious from the outset. And I can understand why she's frustrated. But she had remained in regular contact with police for the last year and was happier with the progression and communication regarding the case. She deserved a full investigation. She deserved for her car and room to be seized and for forensics to be conducted and she didn't get that. And I... I actually really think the same thing i think the police yeah lost it on this one and they've ruined it now so janique hosted a peaceful march through tolaga bay in october to remind the community that jamie was not forgotten and they were still searching for answers and i think quite a few people turned up for that which was nice she said we're still no further than we were from the beginning there's still no body and there's still no answers she has vanished Janique said the police took Jamie's phone and laptop but couldn't access either device she said that managed she managed to access her cousin's laptop and managed to track her last movements from there she managed to track Jamie's movements in the weeks and days leading to her disappearance including a nine hour return trip to Hastings. And if we just quickly check out uh, the North Island again, Hastings where she was talking about is way down here and this was where she was. So a long drive there and back. Then she said that she went further up the coast and she was doing five minute stops so I think maybe she was running drugs for someone. And remember this isn't fact, this is just speculation on what she could have been doing. So I think that my cousin was murdered based on what I can see tracking her locations. I think it's possible she was involved in drug activity and she's not the type of person 
to ever be involved in this type of thing, but who knows what pressures she may have faced. Jonique said her family was not gang affiliated and Jamie was not a dangerous person. She called me a couple of days before she went missing and said she wanted to move in with me. I asked what had happened, but she wouldn't say. So that's a bit of a, another red flag there. And when you add them all up, there's a few red flags. Uh, and I don't know why the police aren't seeing them. Close friend Shade, who had known Jamie since they were five years old, also suspected foul play in her disappearance. Something definitely has happened to her. We know how she was. She wouldn't just leave. We were around her long enough to know her mental health wasn't good, but she still had good days and bad days. Other than that, she wasn't wanting to take her life. She wasn't in that frame of mind to her friends. However, she did acknowledge that in the days leading up to Jamie's disappearance, her mental health started coming down. Jamie's landlord, Lily Stender, said she didn't notice anything out of the ordinary in the days leading up to Jamie's disappearance. She said, this has been an absolute tragedy. I took Jamie in and gave her work and she was enjoying it. Detective Senior Sergeant Kevin Ford, area manager, said once the investigation had concluded, it would be referred to the coroner. So if there's any updates, uh, whether she gets found or whether the case gets referred to the coroner, coroner and I get some information about that, I'll update the case. Police continued to liaise closely with the family. Police encourage anyone with information about the lead up to Jamie's disappearance that may assist the investigation to call 105, quoting file number 191014-3116. Now I'm also going to put that information in the description box and there's some information here about helplines if this story triggered anything for you and I'll have some numbers of those in the description box as well. So let's prove to this family that we do care about what they're going through and the disappearance of Jamie. Uh, we don't care whether she's indigenous or not. We all should be treated the same and unfortunately in New Zealand gosh, it's, I, it's the media there's just not enough media and we never get to hear about missing persons to find missing persons you've really got to go digging in, in New Zealand I should say unless like this family have done have put work in and put her face and story all over Facebook but that's a lot of work, especially when you're dealing with grief and everything as well. Look, share this around wherever you can. If you know people in the North Island, send it to them, share it to your friends and see if we can drum up any information. Thank you very much for hanging out with me and I will see you next time.